WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee. Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, we're going to talk about gardening practices that work for us and that will work for you too. As well as Earth Day. How did it come to be and what does it truly mean? And we're going to have the largest garden YouTuber with nearly 400,000 subscribers, John Cohen. And your questions via phone, tweet, and email. Tell all your gardening friends that Garden Radio is on the air because it all starts right now. You're tuned in to the only vegetable gardening radio show in Milwaukee with your host, Joey Baird, who grew up in the country but now lives closer to the city, and Hallie Baird, who has always been a city girl. Combined, they have over 25 years of gardening experience who believe in simple gardening practices. A gardener for all gardeners, founders of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where they created over 800 how-to garden videos to teach others how to grow more of what they eat. Join them for the next hour as they discuss vegetable gardening and more. It is the Wisconsin Gardener Radio Show right here on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. However, you may be listening to us, whether through those stations, the Simple Radio app, the TuneIn app, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio tab, or anywhere in between. I am your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, Holly gardening Baird. partner. Hi, Bear. Behind uh, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is your destination for all things gardening. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 850 videos, and a whole lot more. We're producing about nine a week uh, in the garden videos, as well as in studio videos and highlights of what goes on during the show. The show is made possible by the sponsors that you hear throughout the program. Without them, we are not here every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Nacelle Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Nacelle is made in Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocery. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nacelle Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find out more at nacelle.com. There's a number of ways in which you can contact us through during the program as well as throughout the week. One way to do that during the show is the IvyOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally friendly, safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com, and that's 414-444-5250 if you want to call with a question or comment. You don't have to wait to the last portion of the show. You've got one. You can call in now. You can also email us at twvgradio at gmail.com, or if you are on Twitter, you can just simply send a tweet by using hashtag TWVG. Well, we have a number of great talks uh, lined up in May. We also had a nice talk, a nice gathering at West Bend uh, Public Library this past Monday on growing tomatoes. And we want to say hi to all of those who are attended and are listening today. They just found out about the program and they're very excited about it. As well as this Wednesday, we will conclude our three-part series at West Bend Public Library. New Berlin. New Berlin. What, What did I say? West Bend. No, West Bend. Okay, well, that one's coming up uh, in the beginning of May. That one's May 1st. Uh, New Berlin uh, at 6 p.m. At uh, We're going to talk about maximizing your garden space regardless of the size you have available. And then also... And then uh, Thursday, the 27th at 7 p.m., we're going to be in West Alice, and we're going to talk about how to grow the best tomatoes. So join us there if you want to find out where we will be, where you are at. The Come See Us tab under the uh, on the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com page, website, you can find out all the listings. We've got a lot in May and several in June. And if you've got a business group, club, organization, or other gathering in which you would like us to speak, contact us through that speaking request tab or email us at twvgradio at gmail.com. Well, we've got a jam-packed show, and we want to discuss... Uh, one of the big things that we want to talk about today. Okay, well, first, we're gonna, uh, somebody called in oh, last yes, yes. week and asked about grapeseed oil. Our and homework. Yeah, our homework. And if it is anti-aging for the skin. And, yes, it, grapeseed oil, actually, when I was doing a little bit of research on this, it has a lot of benefits. I would encourage you to research as, as well. 
but it contains a uh, linoleic acid that strengthens the cell membranes and improves the overall quality of your skin. Its regular usage cures various types of skin troubles, including acne and pimples. Its antioxidant characters prevent the pores from clogging and further prevents the outburst of acne. So it's anti-aging. It's, and I was, when I was reading it, it's also really great for under like dark under eye circles. So you could put it under your eyes and it'll help prevent that as well. And since it's, it doesn't clog pores, it's good for your skin. There you go. So, just a, another good question that we had come in last week. So we want to discuss garden practices that work for us. Now, we want, we want to, the disclaimer here is we excluded anything that was relevant to specific size or type of garden because not everybody, and there's no, probably nobody in the city of Milwaukee or listing worldwide that has the same garden style, size, dimensions as ours. So we wanted to exclude that. But these are practices that will work really regardless of the type of garden you have. And we've got a number of them here, and these are something that we have done in our garden. This is not a list that we got from some website somewhere. These are ones that work for us. Right. So one is work the soil but do not till. Now, we're not saying that if you've tilled for the past whatever years, don't do that. It's, it's kind of something that we do and we've chosen to do. We don't till our soil. And that's for a variety of different scientific reasons. Uh, there's a lot of microbial life, a lot of worms, a lot of life in the soil. By tilling it, you are disrupting that. You're taking their house and shaking it all up and distributing in different locations. Uh, in addition, we have a, approximately 30 worms per square foot in our garden. The average, the University Extension of Madison says if you have 9 to 10, you're doing really good. We have about 30 to 25 to 30, 35 worms per square foot. That's one square foot of soil brought out, examined, and counted the worms. So by tilling, we would be killing a tremendous amount of earthworms that help aerate the soil, help break down organic matter, as well as help fertilize with their droppings, their manure, in the garden. So that's, one, that's the reason, that's the prime reason why we don't till. And if you don't have the worms... You can get the worms by just adding organic material to your garden, dry grass clippings, shredded leaves, uh, coffee grounds, used coffee grounds. That will bring them in. You don't have to, and you don't want to buy them from the bait shop and dump them in your garden containers. Or not. You don't want to do that because it's going to that it's going to mess up the ecosystem. So another one is? Is using trellises. So trellises are anything that gets your, gets your vine plants, your vine crops, and even your tomatoes off of the ground and obviously things like pumpkins and large squash that isn't going to work but things like beans like pole beans your cucumbers any sort of thing that can climb that isn't too heavy is a good idea to use a trellis for well and you can trellis some of these larger crops the cantaloupe the watermelon the pumpkins but there's a lot of work that goes into it because you've got to have some help with maybe a netting of some sort to hold that heavy weight. Now, true enough, the, the Native Americans and, and, and years and hundreds of years ago, these, a lot of these squashes were naturally designed to climb up trees because of the vines. That's the way they were. In some places, you can still find some of these rare squashes. Uh, we've got a friend in Tennessee. He finds these along the side of the road, these squashes that grow up these trees, and he harvests them and saves the seeds and grows them in his garden. So that's another one. And trellising, it doesn't have to be some fancy fancy thing that you buy at the garden center you can use a trellis of any sort shape size it doesn't have to be eye appealing it can be flat out ugly as long as it gets the job done we've got several different trellises that we use in our garden right we have we've taken old baby cribs baby gates um the sides of baby cribs uh, baby gates or even we found a the, dog kennel thing yeah which was questionable right but the the bottom the the, the metal the, yeah, the, the spring the, part. The spring part that the mattress sets on works really, really well for any type. Now, true enough, it's only about four and a half, five foot in height, but that will get some of that elevation that you need because if you've got a 20, well, let's say you've got a 50 square foot area, by elevating pole beans, by elevating cucumbers, cucumbers can take 20 to 30 square feet if you let them go. By We've put, even done um, teepee trellises with wood, with um, branches, old branches that were we didn't need and so you can get really creative right and that's an that's a that's a great one to use uh when it comes to trellising is use what you have preferably if you use a neighbor's fence make sure there's an agreement there that you're not stealing space off their fence 
So let's talk about bringing bringing birds into the garden. And so this is good if you have things like the tomato horn, hornworm or the cabbage looper. Or bad, just or bad just bugs. any bad bugs. So what we do is we take a tuna can, a cleaned out tuna can, and we just uh, nail it to a post and put some bird seed in there. And that bird seed brings the birds to the garden. They see the bad bugs, the bad Insects, caterpillars, whatnot, the, the bad ones, and they eat them. Now, people will say, well, my, my tomatoes are getting holes pecked in them because of the birds. Well, the reason why birds are pecking holes in your tomatoes is simply because the birds are thirsty. They're looking for moisture. Birds will also eat soft fruit like blueberries or blackberries or strawberries. But by giving them the food, that bird seed, you're going to attract them to that particular feeding area rather than having... The birds feed on your actual produce, and they're actually controlling and helping that ecosystem in your garden by eating those bad bugs. And you're bringing them in, and everybody's happy. Now, if you have the problems with the pecking the holes, you know, introduce a bird bath. It's not going to hurt anything. And then you can also look into how you can modify that bird bath in order to help feed or or, uh, hydrate the, the honeybees or the bees that are coming in that are pollinating your garden as well. Okay, and then we have beer to kill slugs. I know... There's many different areas of the the city itself where you're going to have a lot of slugs just because of the way the soil is, the way the the your backyard ecosystem is. And we found this effective. And so you don't want to you don't want to just put like a a can of beer in your garden that doesn't work. What you want to do is take some sort of container like a cup or an old like yogurt container or whatnot and bury it so that it's at ground level. And then you put the beer in there and then the slugs are attracted to it, so they fall in. That hop smell is what attracts yeah, it's them. Yeah, the hop. Now, and not all beers work, but it, if you're going to use beer and you're concerned about using your beer, borrow your neighbor's. No, if you... I, yeah. <laughs> actually, what worked for us was an IPA because it has more of that hop right. that hop taste to it. So I think that's what attracted them. And you will be amazed of how many slugs come and just die bomb into that. And they, they get that smell and they, they fall into it thinking it's a, a shallow base to drink it and they drown. And you can get hundreds and hundreds of slugs uh, very, very quickly. And you can do this multiple places in your garden. But again, now when it rains, you may have to reapply that beer because that may flush out of that cup. So keep that in mind. Okay, so then we have mulch. Which mulch we talked about heavily last importance. week. If you want to revisit that conversation, you can find that under the radio tab on the website uh, of, about mulch. And then growing carrots in containers. That's a really great idea because the soil is nice and loose. Any root crop likes the loose soil. It has a chance to get deep down in there, and that's why it's nice to grow carrots. And right, containers. and you want if you want a, a basin that is about twelve inches, a container, and make sure you have drainage holes. Whether you have a grow bag and or a container, you can pack a lot of carrots in a very very small spot in order to get those carrots to grow very deeply into the uh, the container. Now, and and we've done this, and you'll see this on several of our videos about the the container car- carrot growing. And just because you've got carrots doesn't mean they have to be orange. We've got every variety, every color of the rainbow when it comes to carrots in containers. And we, we've tried this in a variety of different ways. We've tried this in the ground. didn't work because we had very dense soil. You can loosen the soil up. And if your soil has too much nitrogen in it, that's when you get the forking or the hairy carrots on, uh, and the disfigurement of the carrots because there's too much nitrogen in the soil. So you want to keep that in mind. And again, another one is intensive planting. When it comes to planting in a small space, you want to maximize that space you have available in your garden. And just because, and when I talk about intensive planting, I don't mean, uh, what I mean by that is if the recommendations, if the, the, the back of the seed packet says every 9 to 12 inches, squeeze them in about 7 inches Make sh- and, and try to get those plants to Canop- the, the canopy to touch each other and just have a hedge of plants. Well, when we come back, Holly's going to talk to us all about what Earth Day is. April 22nd is National Earth Day, I guess, is Worldwide Earth Day. And we're going to talk all about that and what it really means right after this. Tweet Joey and Holly using hashtag TWVG. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccess.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and a healthier root structure. You can increase seeds 
sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponics, root cutting, seed sprouting, coca core, and soil. PlantSuccess.com carries powder, granule, and tablet forms of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil for your plants to give them the optimal opportunity to produce an incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccess.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. With over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom and organic, flower, vegetable and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and gardening needs, tools, and special blend fertilizer. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Mantis Plant Protection Professional Grade Organic Pest Control Solutions. They offer Mantis EC concentrated or ready to use sprays, certified organic and environmentally friendly insect killer, gentle on pollinators and other organisms, but effective in killing soft bodied insects and spider mites fast. Safe around your children and pets. They also have the cleanest and whitest diet tomatoes are on the market. Visit mantispp.com to receive a free organic pesticide cheat sheet which is a list of organic insecticides that are used effectively and kills insects fast. Visit mantispp.com to download it today. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. Hi, I'm John Lewandowski, retail manager of Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Now, I'm not going to tell you about our awesome dome-grown plants, our beautiful pottery, or our 40 varieties of landscape materials. What I am going to tell you is that Blue Mel's is a local, independent, family-owned garden center that truly cares about your garden or landscape project. So if you're looking for that one garden center that actually cares about you, come to Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. We've been treating our customers like family since 1955. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. It's the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 850 some odd videos, and a whole lot more, all for your viewing pleasure and educational purposes. Well, for our enjoyment when it comes to fresh produce, TreeRipe.com has the answer, and they will be here in Milwaukee in about, what, a month and a half, something like that? I think maybe two months. Two months? Yeah. Okay, so Tree Ripe, if you like fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood, you should check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. You can find out where to pick up top quality produce from tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful, tasty peaches and sweet, juicy blueberries. If you're sick of bland, mealy peaches and lackluster blueberries from your local grocer, visit treeripe.com, and they have what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. For location and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They have locations all over, including Iowa, Upper and Lower Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-ripe.com is your go-to for the freshest produce around. And you can sign up for their email, and you can get, uh, or you can just go to the website and see where they're going to be. Uh, multiple stops here in the Milwaukee area in just a few short weeks. Months. Months. Well, short weeks compared to years. Okay. okay so Earth Day is uh, April 22nd. It's a national uh, organized gathering to uh, what app- appreciate the Earth, I guess. Earth Day should be every day. It shouldn't just be one designated uh, day during the year. It's uh, it, it's much like in the in the Christian faith. Easter is celebrated uh, because of what happens every Sunday, every day. Earth Day should be the same thing. We should recognize and appreciate and and take care of the Earth every day, not just one day a year. Right. So April twenty second is Earth Day, and this started in nineteen seventy. A senator from Wisconsin, in fact, you're, senator, you're proud of that, aren't you? I very, I am very proud of that. Okay. He. He was like, hey, uh, so there was a lot of things going on, especially in California. There was oil spills, and he just saw that there was a lot of pollution, and he decided to bring people together. And on that day in 1970, there was a lot of uh, protests. There was some 
just rallies, things like that. So no different than today? No. Okay. Okay. But the good thing is, is that it caused, it achieved what is called a political alignment, which is maybe probably what we need now, but it enlisted support from Republicans and Democrats, rich and poor, city slickers, farmers, tycoons, labor leaders. And by the end of that year, the first Earth Day led to the creation of the Environmental Protection Protection Agency, the passing of the Clean Air, Clean Water, and Endangered Species Acts. And so it was it was a good thing. And so that's why we observe it today. So when it comes to the Earth Day, there's a lot of things. Uh, used to be, I don't know if it's still this year, but they'd always say, you know, turn all the lights off in your house for an hour at, at a it's certain time. It's called Earth Hour. Or Earth Hour. Is mm-hmm. that, that rep- that's yeah, today. that's still a thing. And I think they have them throughout the year. You can find more information. Well, just turn your that. lights off when you're not in the room anyway. Right. I mean, that's just very simple. Well, some people don't get that. But <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so the reason... Earth Day is kind of every day for for Joey and I because of things that we do and we choose to do. But also, one thing that many people don't think about is how far your food actually travels. And I wanted to bring this up because as gardeners, this is part of the reason we garden. It's to eliminate the distance from food to plate or farm to plate or farm to table, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it. And the average American meal travels 1,500 miles. So that's approximately, what is it, halfway from here, from Wisconsin, that's halfway to California? Is that about right? Right. Approximately? Yeah. So okay. maybe here we are, food that, That's the average. The average. So that means, it, when you figure averages, there can be three, four, five thousand 5,000 miles uh, for, for certain items that you might have on your plate tonight, from Argentina, from Japan, from China, you, you fill in the blank, you can go to the grocery store and have a selection of fruit and produce, meats and everything else from anywhere in the world, any time you want it, uh, any time of year you want it. Right. So, and so this long distance, long scale transportation of food, it consumes large quality quantities of fossil fuels. And it's which, not healthy either. And we're going to talk to John Colter in, 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 right. in a few minutes where it's going, he, he talks about, hey, we're going to ask him about, the, you know, why does he grow uh, so many greens in his in his on his property, right. but the, the traveling you lose that nutrients as soon as crops are harvested, regardless in your backyard or in a field in, in Southern California, the crop actually begins to rot. I mean, it's a, it's a disgusting thing to say, but it begins to bio, it begins to to break down because the plant and the fruit has been disconnected. There's no more nutrients going to that fruit or vegetable or that leafy green. Right. So the, the, so then that burning of fossil fuels then puts uh, carbon dioxide emissions out into the air. Now, we we, dr- we don't drive a hybrid car, so no. let's not think we're right. better than anybody else. But, okay. but we're conscious we of are, what we are we're, conscious. We're, we, we see our steps mm-hmm. before we make them and, and find out, is this a smart move to make? Can we go these four places and do that all in one full drive instead of doing four separate drives, four separate days? Right. So then I wanted to, since since this is being, you know, we're talking about this, maybe, obviously not everybody is like you and I, Joey, where we can grow and can a lot of food, a lot of our food. Maybe they have a smaller garden and they want to think about what, what they can do separately. And so that would be something like shopping at farmer's markets. We talked about this with Kyle last week on West, right. uh, the host of Wisconsin Foodie. He was on last week. Uh, and he talked about that, that local food movement in which uh, you can buy you know, and, and uh, buy locally, and, and that, that's what we do. We can't grow broccoli or cauliflower for nothing. Right. So we, instead of using that spot for failure, we use that spot for success and grow something else, and, uh, and we go buy our broccoli and cauliflower at the farmer's market uh, that's fresh that was harvested that morning. Right. So there's options there. There's farmer's markets, and there's CSAs, which are community-supported agriculture. And, which... and now, real quick, let's, let's talk about CSAs, mm-hmm. because this is something that many people – Heard the term? It's like a GMO. They 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 hear the initials, but they do not understand. Or maybe what they have is. a coworker that has a CSA, but they're like, I don't know what the heck that is. Right, so, a CSA. CSA is community supported agriculture. So essentially, what you're doing is your. It's like a subscription for vegetables, or there's meat ones, there's egg ones, there's all sorts M- of things. Milk, the whole deal. Yeah. So what you're doing is at the beginning of the. Season usually, I think, like in winter. And, and I'm sure there's still there's there's several of them around yeah. the area. You can still probably buy subscriptions for summer and fall that type. So right. it's not like at a certain date it just shuts off. You can probably get a hold of them and they'll be more than happy to help you. But so mo- most commonly it's vegetables right. or 
you know, fruit or whatnot. So what you do is you, you get a subscription, which you pay for, I believe it's monthly or something, and then the farmer is going to promise you that you get X amount of X poundage of vegetables. Poundage. Per, not, poundage. Not so many this or so many that. It's what they have available right. because they have complications just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the tomatoes don't always ripen the right time. The asparagus is not always as big as uh, you would like it to be. It, it's one of these things. It's nature. But you're not going to end up with like 40 pounds of garlic. No. If they give you a variety. Right, right. So... <laughs> So then every month or every couple of weeks, depending on what your CSA agreement is, you go to a stop and you pick up your box of produce. And then that way you're support, supporting local farms. You're cutting down on your farm to table distance. And, and it tastes so much better. And it tastes so much better. And you and can so do this a, in addition. Of, you can yeah. do this in addition to having your garden. Because there's so, – we're, we're a little different, Holly, and, and people who see our videos, you know, we have a very large garden. We have three gardens. We, we mainly garden in two and help your sister garden in the third. We grow a variety of different things. Not everybody uh, – some people may just focus strictly on tomatoes. Some people may strictly focus on cucumbers or, or beans. They don't have the space to have that variety. So they, they supplement that, okay, I'm growing this, so I'm going to buy or subscribe to a CSA for X amount of other stuff. So that's, right. that, that's another and, thing to look at. And plus, if you, are, if you enjoy cooking, it could be something fun and an adventure for you. You might get something that you've never cooked before, and you can try it out. Right. So uh, with that being said, uh, you know, we've... You, we want to make you aware because it's, to some people it's just another day. To other people it means something. And to all of us we should at least be aware of what we're doing, recreational as well as business. And putting – recycling is part of Earth Day. Well, that – and thinking about, okay, say you go and you, go to, you stop at the gas station or wherever every morning for your coffee. Think about what you're putting your coffee in. And then where that goes. Think about well. First of all, think how much money you're spending when you could just okay. make a pot at a home. Just, not, just do the math. Right. First of all, and but utilize this is, that this money. This is not for, about. This is not a financial lesson. Okay. Here. Okay. Well, I'm just people okay. don't think about this. Right. Okay. Anyway, so you stop and you get your coffee and donut or whatnot. So now you have this coffee cup, which you're probably throwing away into the trash. And then where does that trash go? Many people don't think beyond that. They don't think about where their trash is going. Your trash doesn't just go away. If you're not sure about where your trash goes, just stop over at the waste management location over off of Highway 100 and Brown Deer, or 124th and Brown Deer, and you'll see it there. You'll see the landfills, and that will give you a good understanding. I'm sure there's other in the area as well. But you have to think about that. So something as simple as, and in water bottles too, a lot of people are now trying to become more environmentally conscious. Think about what you're doing in your home and in your lifestyle that you can make a difference. Is it with. more economically and environmentally friendly to purchase a investment of a water filter to attach to your faucets rather than buying X amount of bottles of water each week? And regardless if you're recycling the bottles or not, let's take that equation out. Just think of how much uh, energy is I- endured in the production of that bottle and pumping the water out of the ground from who knows where in the in the country and shipping it to you when a water filter, and there's some very good quality right. ones or that just, you could use. Just think about maybe one thing you can change every month or throughout the year. Maybe you start with a reusable water bottle. Maybe you start with a reusable coffee cup, reusable grocery bags, taking your lunch in a reusable container. Just things like that that you can think about to help reduce your personal waste. Another thing you can think about is utilizing a piece of equipment for lawn maintenance that is up to code and uh, friendly to the environment as much as you possibly can that it, it, it uses the you know it doesn't overuse fuel it's economically friendly to the point where you're not wasting energy fuel and uh, fossil fuels and by doing that you can get a good quality piece of equipment for er- from errands right do you hear that that's your neighbor shaking in their grass stained shoes because Aaron's about to, is about to help you stop your grass cutting game. Your name is on the mailbox, so Aaron's name should be on your mower. Heavy duty steel construction, smarter, smoother controls, professional cutting performance. The only thing we love more than the smell of freshly cut grass is a sweet taste of victory. Aaron's, it comes down to this. Visit Aaron's.com to find your local dealer for lawn and snow removal equipment. Coming up after the break, the largest YouTuber on the planet will be with us, Mr. John Colder from Las Vegas, Nevada, right after this. Have a gardening question? Email Joey and Holly at twvgradio at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. 
you say? You say nasala kombucha. It'll put some glide in your stride and some pep in your step. Nasala kombucha. <laughs> yeah. Nasala kombucha makes your body happy. Nasala kombucha makes your body smile. growing family and I try to make healthy meals and one thing I really love about Woodman's is that they have a huge selection of fresh fruits and vegetables and the quality is really good too they even carry locally grown produce and they keep the prices low so I can stay within my budget and put a healthy meal on the table I'm Cameron and this is my Woodman's Do you want your next raised beds to be easy, functional, and beautiful? The Embrace helps you create the garden you've always wanted. Finally, raised beds that everyone can assemble and enjoy. No tools needed. Just slide any lumber into the Embrace corner, fill with your favorite soil mix, and you're ready to plant. Made from 100% recycled steel right here in the USA. And a portion of every sale helps to build school and community gardens all across the country. Let the Embrace help you create your next raised bed. Grow beautiful. Beautifully with the Embrace. Available at local garden centers and online at artofthegarden.net. Hot Shun Mill, 125 years of experience producing stone, ground, organic flour, and cornmeal made from premium quality whole grains. Family owned company, continual standards that are non GMO, organic at the highest safety levels. Offering a wide variety of flours, pasta, baking mixes, flaxseed, and more. Even kosher and gluten free options. Found at most local grocers like Woodman's. For more information, and recipes, visit hotshinmill.com. That's H-O-D-G-S-O-N-M-I-L-L.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey and Holly Baird. Ah, it is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 845, 850 videos, and a whole lot more. Well, in just moments away, we're going to head to Las Vegas, Nevada, to talk with the biggest garden YouTuber in the world. But first, Blue Mills is now open seven days a week for their bulk availability on their bulk products. They have wood chips, sand, compost can be delivered right to your residence, as well as their 2017 event schedule is up on their website at bluemills.com. They have a tremendous amount of classes uh, uh, that you can attend. Most of them are for free. Some of them, there's a registration uh, for kids to participate. It's under their garden tab, and we'll be there for their spring kickoff May 6th, from about 10:30 to 12:30, mm-hmm. where there's going to be free food. They're going to, you can see the the, per, the 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 whole garden center. They're going to be dueling out blue mailbox. It's going to be a really big event. We'll have a little corner there for you to meet and greet us and answer your garden questions. And where can all this be found at? Where can we go? You can go to Blue Mails at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. Um, you can go to bluemails.com or you can call 414-282-4220. So, and they're the official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So we hope to see you out there May 6th. And also they have an event on May 7th, but uh, May 6th is when we'll be out there. We want to uh, go to the ivyorganic.com hotline and bring in our next guest. John Colder is the founder and creator of Growing Your Greens YouTube channel. It's the most watched YouTube gardening show on, on the Internet with over 1,200 garden videos currently that helps you grow your own food and what to do with it and field tips gardening and organic farm and businesses across the country he visits, as well as answering garden questions from viewers from around the world. With over 387,000 subscribers and over 54 million views, is a fun, enlightening show on how to grow your own food at home and beyond. John provides you with the tips and tricks, as well as shares his experience of growing food in his urban homestead, John is dedicated to helping you sustainably grow at the healthiest and highest quality fruit, vegetables, herbs, nuts, and other edibles in your front yard and beyond. He's also the founders of OKRaw.com and DiscountJuicers.com. Welcome, John Coulter, to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, John, uh, you with an enormous YouTube channel on Growing Your Greens, 
you didn't start this YouTube channel in 2009 because you wanted to be famous or you wanted to 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 get a lot of views or or, or, or viewers. You started this to share your experience and help people eat healthier uh, because you had the you started your plant based raw diet back in 1995 because it was not for fun or because your friends were doing it. But because if you didn't do it, you may have died. And I don't want to tell the story. I'd like you to share that story with the listeners who don't know who you are. Right, yeah. I started my YouTube channel just to share how I was growing in my front yard. You know, I've been gardening for a number of years at that point in the periphery of my yard, probably like many people. And I was inspired to start growing my own food because, you know, all along my journey of health, which gardening is just a part of my larger journey of health. Many people don't realize that I almost lost my life when I was younger. I had spinal meningitis. And luckily, I got through that through actually no medical intervention because med the medical system had no treatment for me. But upon leaving the hospital, I asked the doctors, why did I get sick in the first place? And they said, well, you know, it's called complement immune deficiency, which is a chronically uh, weak immune system. So uh, they said they had no cure or no help for me, and I was just kind of out of luck. So I, I basically then need to figure out what I could do on my own uh, to build my health up. And I found basically by eating copious amounts of fresh fruits and vegetables that was the best way to go for me and then the evolution of that was just to start growing my own food to have higher quality food than money can buy now you're in las vegas and, and your growing conditions are different than ours here in wisconsin but if techniques and and season extenders are used properly you, we can grow pretty much year round now you grow and it's no joke you grow what about 95 percent of all the produce that you eat on a regular basis is that an accurate number well i wish I wish it was as high as 95% uh, year-round and on a, a you know year-round basis. I will definitely say it's you know probably a good 95% of my leafy greens and other vegetables year-round. You know I'm still working on getting a larger property where I could grow 99% of everything I eat, but I'm still a, a big consumer and support organic and local farms. Uh, you know whenever I can, I try to always get the highest quality food if I don't grow it myself and. You know, I mean, even though I'm really into this, I'm not growing all my own food. And that's just a message out to your listeners there because, I mean, I, I don't want this to be an all-or-nothing proposition for people. Well, I can't grow all my food. I'm not going to do it at all. No. Start out with a four-foot by four-foot raised bed. You know, grow some microgreens indoors. Everybody could always do just a little bit to increase the quality of their food that they're eating and also, um, you know, uh, save money at the same time. Right, and you go to farmer's markets with the, the fruits that you can't purchase, the jackfruits and the coconuts and that kind of thing. So, you, yeah, and, and you, you know, you're just not going to any farmer's market. You're talking to the farmers, and you're making sure it's organic, and, and it's not just the, the junk you find at the grocery store. Right, I always try to do the best I can, and as much as I go to farmer's markets, I also go to the uh, wholesale produce terminal, uh, you know, where basically it's the... Uh, a step ahead of buying it from the grocery stores because at least, you know, the farmers deliver it to the wholesale produce terminal. The wholesale produce terminal then delivers it, uh, you know, to the supermarkets or health food stores. So I'm kind of cutting out part of the middleman and I get it more fresh. And, you know, even then, you know, I always try to select the highest quality fruits and vegetables because there is a difference. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I just do the best I can. And that's what I encourage everybody to do. Well, that's fantastic. Now, we get this question a lot and you address it quite frequently. And you just talked about now about starting like a four by four area. What can one grow to maximize the little space that they have available? Right. Yeah. So what I recommend people grow is what they're going to eat and what's going to benefit them the most. Right. I mean, for example, carrots would not be one of the things that I grow, even though I like to eat carrots and they're quite nutritious food because carrots in general are pretty inexpensive to buy and they, you know, take a fairly long time to grow and um, it's not the best investment of your space. So I mean, in general, I would say. The best investment in some of these spaces is to grow leafy greens. Here's the main reason why. The main reason why is because, say, you grow a tomato plant. you got to plant that tomato plant. The tomato plant grows the leaves. It gets a couple feet tall. It might put on some flowers. Finally, the, the, the flowers get pollinated and then finally puts on fruit. And then maybe 60 to 90 days later, you're eating some tomatoes. But meanwhile, instead, in that same space, if you would have planted some leafy greens, collard greens, lettuce, or whatever greens are in season where you live, so you could plant those, and within 20 days, you could start harvesting baby leaves off the plant and start eating off that plant. And, and in general, leafy greens are much more expensive per pound than, say, tomatoes. 
And then at the time that the farmer harvests them from wherever in the world they're at to the time you buy them at the grocery store, they've lost a tremendous amount of nutrients that you would have gotten if you just grew your own. Exactly. Yeah, that's another thing, actually. Good. Thank you for pointing that out. Is You know, something like a tomato shifts relatively well. Leafy greens, unfortunately, they do not travel well at all. Once you pick the leafy greens off the plant, they start to degrade very fast. I mean, I've got tomatoes from the standard commercial, you know, system that have lasted easily a month after I buy them, you know, and these are like the uh, hydroponic, uh, hothouse grown um, tomatoes. And so, you know, they'll, they'll keep pretty well, but I can't say that for any leafy greens I've ever bought, which is actually quite a rare occasion. Well, I know that, you know, there, your, uh, your business is discountjuicers.com, and we're not telling people to go buy a juicer, but I want to address juicers because you juice a lot of your produce, and many of our listeners may have heard about juicing, think about juicing, but they don't know where to start because different juicers are used for different different applications. And if you could just describe, you know, what you know, for leafy greens, for example, versus apple juicing. Right, yeah. So there's many different kinds of juicers on the market, and it's all kind of like how many pairs of shoes, especially if you're a lady or even a guy, how many pairs of shoes do you own? You might have a pair of work boots for working. You might have a pair of hiking boots. You might have a pair of uh, running sneakers and maybe a, a pair of sandals for going to the beach or whatnot. And each kind of sandal or shoe has a different purpose in mind. And, I mean, yeah, you could take your, you know, steel-toed boots to the beach, not too functional. And likewise, you know, there's juices that will juice everything, and some things they just don't tend to juice as well as others. So, you know, I recommend people juicing a lot of leafy greens because leafy greens is the most undervalued and undereaten food on the entire planet. And, uh, you know, it's the, one of the most healing foods on the entire planet. It's the most nutrient-dense foods, which means it has the most phytonutrients and phytochemicals, vitamins and minerals, as compared to the calories. And most Americans eat high-calorie foods like, you know, hamburgers and French fries and Cokes and sodas. All these things have lots of calories but very little nutrients that are going to protect you from cancer and disease and, and keep you young. And meanwhile, the leafy greens on the opposite end of the spectrum. Unfortunately, most people don't eat significant portions of leafy greens, and that's why I like juicing. Literally, you could put a pound of leafy greens into the juicer, it's going to turn that pound of leafy green, uh, you know, material that might be hard to eat in a salad, or for example, you know, you could turn it into just one cup of juice and virtually get the majority of the, the phytochemicals and phytonutrients out of the greens into your cup, and then you could drink it and get them into you so that you will get the benefit. Then, in general, the main juicer I recommend for juicing leafy greens is called a slow juicer. There's many different kinds of slow juicers on the market, and depending if people want to juice leafy greens as well as other fruits and vegetables, I might recommend a vertical slow juicer, uh, which actually has the auger uh, going up and down or vertically. And the one I use is called the Omega VSJ843. That's the best one that i found for juicing leafy greens as well as other fruits and vegetables. If you want to juice more just straight up leafy greens and maybe not a lot of other fruits or vegetables, then I would recommend and you want to juice things like wheatgrass and sprouts and a lot of that stuff. I'd recommend something like a horizontal single auger juicer. My favorite of that kind is the Omega um, NC800, which is a horizontal single auger. And uh, that one really does a lot better with the uh, leafy greens, but not so good with the fruits. And, of course, both the different models that I mentioned will juice hard vegetables uh, as well. And those are also really good things to eat. People don't understand that, you know, when you start uh, processing food, heating food, you start losing and degrading some of the valuable phytonutrients and phytochemicals. For example, if you just took kale, you fresh picked it from your garden, you brought it in, you put it in, you know, a pot of boiling water, or you steam your kale, um, you know, you're, you're not going to get the anti-cancer nutrition that you're going to get if you actually brought the kale in and then put it through your juicer, let the juicer masticate it, crush it all up, and you get the juice out and you could drink the juice. Right, that makes sense. Now, have, I don't know if you've ever had anybody tell you and a lot of times people have a hard time digesting a lot of a lot of greens at one time when you juice them does that make it easier to di digest versus eating them just plain raw like in a salad absolutely so you know the main thing with juicing is that you're removing one of the two types of fiber so people think oh when you juice you remove all the fiber well that's not exactly correct you know there's two main kinds of fiber that's been identified it's the soluble and insoluble fiber. So the soluble dissolves in the water, and so that's the kind of fiber you keep when you're juicing because all the soluble fiber is in the juice that you're going to be drinking. So, for example, in a carrot, it's about 48% um, soluble fiber and 52% insoluble. So when you're juicing carrots, you're still getting approximately 50% of the fiber that's in there. And the fiber is what many people have challenges with. And actually, we don't really digest fiber. You know, it, 
Fiber acts as a broom to help keep us clean, but more important role for fiber is actually uh, feed our microbiome. You know, and this is why I recommend organic gardening. Um, you know, it's these microbes in the soil that actually convert the uh, organic matter and trace minerals into nutrients that our plants can absorb, and it's our microbiome or our beneficial bacteria and microbiota and beneficial yeast and whatnot inside our guts, um, you know, that help convert that those that, those uh, foods and the fiber, especially into nutrients for us, and also keeps them alive and keeps them happy. And so the challenge arises that if people are not used to eating a lot of leafy greens and other vegetables, they don't have the right microbiome in their guts to digest them. So the only way to do this is to start off eating more leafy greens and more raw plant foods, you know, little by little, and start building on that and making it more and more over time. And an easy way to do that is juicing, because when you're removing, uh, you know, the inside of fiber, it, it makes it a lot easier for your body to digest and get the nutrients out of it, especially when most people don't chew their food adequately into a mush. Have you ever thought why we feed babies baby food? It's because they don't have teeth, and because we have teeth, we should be chewing every mouthful of food into mush for optimal digestion. Now, you spoke about uh, the, the gardening thing. You're a big advocate of raised beds instead of just growing in the ground. Why is that? And there, I'm sure there's a science behind it, why you've chosen to go strictly for raised beds in, in a lot of your uh, residents, as well as when you go to and help people uh, in certain videos, help them build a garden, you always say raised beds, raised beds. Why is that? Right. So for standard residential gardening, you know, I, and, and I do recommend raised beds. And the main reason for that is because you could control more of the factors that you're growing your food in. You know, I'm growing food specifically for one main reason is to have the highest quality food with the most amount of vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals and phytonutrients in the foods because those are the properties in the foods that are most protective for us. If I was just to, like, you know, dig and grow in the soil here where I live, you know, I don't know what's in the soil. There's, I mean, I know there's a lot, a lot of organic matter. There may be pretty good mineral content, but I'm just kind of, I'm just, it's like kind of like the luck of a draw, you know, playing like blackjack. Are you going to hit a 21? Are you going to get, you know, a 15? And if you hit, you're probably going to bust, right? So, I like to be able to control more of my factors, and that's why I like to grow in raised beds specifically because I control the soil medium that I'm growing in. I know exactly what I put in there, and I have a better idea of the nutrient quality and and the results I'm going to get because you can't really control if people sprayed Roundup or had heavy metal contamination in just the ground that you're growing in. Now, if I was on a big, large acreage, you know, definitely I would have some areas of raised beds, and then I'd work other parts of the property. No, I would not have a problem growing in the ground if I prepared the ground properly. Well, John, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your very busy day to join us and our listeners and share your story and maybe encourage some of our listeners to look more towards plant-based rather than the uh, non-sub-plant-based diets that they are currently on. Uh, for, for people who want to check you out, uh, go on and list all the, the websites that uh, they can go to to find you. Sure, yeah, you can check out my gardening videos, over 1,250 gardening videos, all for free, 24 hours a day, seven days a week at growingyourgreens.com. If you're interested in learning about my health and healing journey and my specific diet that I eat, and how you can incorporate more fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet, you want to visit my other YouTube channel at okraw.com. And if you're looking to buy one of the juicers or a blender, even dehydrator, the appliances that allow you to get more fruits and vegetables into your diet so you can be healthier, you want to check me out at discountjuicers.com, and that is also associated with another YouTube channel, youtube.com slash rawfoods, where I do many different uh, videos to keep people up to date with the best juicers. I compare the juicers. I show and demonstrate all the different juicers so you guys can select the best one for you and you guys can start achieving the health goals that you want. Well, John, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate the time that you've given us today and our listeners. Thank you, John. Thank you. And we'll be back right after this with your gardening questions and our gardening answers. Have a gardening question? You can call into the ivorganic.com hotline at 414-444-5250 right now. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants, to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. 
visit rootmaker.com. Do you have a little space to grow? Check out Greenstock Vertical Gardens at greenstockgarden.com. Greenstock is engineered to grow with its innovative space and water-saving design. You can grow vegetables, flowers, herbs, and even strawberries in just two square feet of space. Grow up instead of out. Perfect for the porch, patio, or deck. Grow up to 30 plants in a small space. Greenstockgarden.com has everything you need to grow in the littlest of spaces. Proudly made in the USA. For more information and to purchase, visit greenstockgarden.com. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Really Granola is a small batch Wisconsin-made granola available at reallygranola.com. This granola uses many organic ingredients and features Wisconsin products such as beautiful red Wisconsin cranberries, local honey, and other delicious Wisconsin products. You'll find plenty of fiber and protein in Really Granola, which makes it a great way to start or end your day. This granola is baked in a Wisconsin co-packing kitchen that helps to employ disabled workers. Find Really Granola near you or to buy online, visit reallygranola.com. I want a garden center that listens to and understands my needs. I want to buy my gardening products from a local business with strong ties to the community. All I want is a garden center that truly values their customers. It seems like everyone is selling plants these days, but I'm having a hard time finding quality. I take pride in my garden, so I want my garden center to take pride in their products. Where will you be going for all of your gardening needs this season? Blue Mel's Garden Center. We are your answer. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. And, and you're absolutely right about the tomatoes. Next to a very good woman, tomatoes come in a close second. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. You can find that. That was an interview with Kyle Cherick, the host of Wisconsin Foodie from last week. You can find that interview and the show from last week and all of our shows on the radio tab on our website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. You can also find Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and 850-plus videos there as well. Well, if you've got a question, we've got an answer or can get you an answer on the IVOrganics.com hotline. And IVOrganics.com is what, Holly? Ivy Organic is a 3-in-1 plant garden. naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally friendly, safe, and organic. For information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can call in to 414-444-5250. And we had a question over the break. Or, yeah, she, you know, she, the break lived, she Sheila from, from Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And she said that her... In her backyard, she's having trouble growing produce. Her mom grew, grew all sorts of beautiful produce, so she wants to know what she can do. Well, there's a couple of things that you can do here. One, you want to figure out, you want to add some organic material to the soil because plants take nutrients out, and you've got to put nutrients back in in order for those plants to grow. So add compost, add an organic fertilizer. Number two, find out, uh, just look up, is there shade there now that wasn't there then? And then you can uh, figure out what plants need to be moved around. Is the soil compacted by walking on it, uh, by, by that type, by walking on it, just natural uh, progression of time, soil can get dense. You might need to loosen it up. Now, we don't recommend a tiller. We'd recommend a garden fork or a shovel to loosen it up and get it fluffy again. But also by adding that organic compost, if you wanted to go to uh, the next level, just add about an inch, two inches of that compost and then plant in that compost and let the the natural water push that compost or work that compost down in the soil. So uh, that's kind of a good starting point. Also, uh, you know, you're probably planting the same produce or the same types of plants that your mother was planting there, so that shouldn't be too much of a a difference. It's not like you're trying to grow a coconut tree there and your mom only grew tomatoes there, so uh, some things to keep in mind there. So hopefully that will kind of get you off on a good start on getting that soil revitalized and being able for you to grow healthy produce uh, in that backyard once again. 
Right. So since we were talking about farmers markets and we were talking about them last week, somebody had asked where they had talked about an atlas where you can find farmers markets and fresh fruits and vegetables, and that is called the Farm Fresh Atlas. You can go to farmfreshatlas.org, and that's where you can find it. It's going to give you uh, where you can find farmers markets and naturally uh, local uh, sustainable food. And and if you have a question any time during the week, TWVG Radio at gmail.com, or you can just go to the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com and click on the question button, and you can submit it there. You can submit it through our YouTube channel, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. You can submit it through Facebook, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. So a lot of ways in which you can contact us when we are not on the air. We had a number of questions come in this week via email, Facebook, and YouTube, and we want to address some of them because they are very relevant to what's going on right now. Okay, so somebody had asked, does blood meal go bad? I have a bag that was open and then sealed from six years ago. Now, most fertilizers will not go bad as long as they are sealed properly. If for some reason they're not and water gets in there and moisture gets in there. You have got a block of fertilizer yeah, so that, is, that still has nutrients. It's, it's still good. You just have to figure out how to break it up. you got to break it up. Right. So for the most part, they're not going to go bad. You just want to make sure that if it is a block, you probably want to figure out why you're gonna, how you're going to break that up. But, yeah, it is still good if it's moisture has been removed from it. And, again, any fertilizer. Uh, but uh, do want to kind of look at if it's, like, 40 years old, you might want to reconsider. So what's another one that we had come in in regards to uh, – we had some Epsom, an Epsom salt question. Have you tried using Epsom salt instead of rock phosphate? Which do you like better? Well, Epsom – rock phosphate is a mineral that is mined in different uh, – People will say that within 50 years that will be obsolete. We won't have that. We'll have used all that up. Epsom salt is kind of the same process, but Epsom salt can be used much more sparingly. And it has magnesium sulfate in it, which helps the chlorophyll in the plants that you're growing, flowers, peppers, tomatoes, whatever. It helps green them up. It helps add more green, lush color to your plant. So I would recommend using Epsom salt, and I believe it's one tablespoon per one gallon of water if you're going to water it in. Otherwise, you can just take a handful and broadcast it amongst the area in which you're going to feed the plants that magnesium sulfate. So that work in just regular old Epsom salt. And there's salt. many uses for it around the home. Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 health, health benefits as well as garden benefits to that as well. Okay. So what else do we have here? We have an heirloom question right. versus uh, hybrid. So is there any downside unless you want to grow exclusively heirlooms and organic hybrids? Okay, so they want to know if, if there's a general preference for heirloom versus hybrid. Well, is the, So if they want to know do kind of what the difference is, what's the downside uh, on either, I guess. Okay, heirloom are old seeds that have been passed down from generation to generation. Those, those brandy wines, those black crims, those type of things, those very old uh, tomatoes or peppers or heirloom seeds that you'll see at migardener.com, they, they've just been a, a tradition that's been sometimes, and some of these seeds are hundreds and hundreds of years old that have been just continually passed down. Hybrids are seeds in which they're not genetically modified, but they are take uh, two species of, for example, tomatoes are. There's a drought-tolerant tomato and a heavy producer tomato. Uh, a gardener or a greenhouse will cross those two and get an offspring of that tomato in which it will produce a drought-tolerant plant that will produce heavy production. So really there's no downside. There's characteristics to both that are good. Now, if you're a newer garden, gardener and you're new to growing tomatoes, it's not going to hurt to to grow hybrids and heirlooms alike. You'll, you'll get some good experience there. Right. So, But look at what you're looking uh, – look at the, the benefits for both. Well, sponsors are the only reason why we're here. We're here for you and your gardening questions. But these sponsors you hear throughout the show that are under the radio tab on the website uh, pay the bills to, to allow us to be here. And our executive sponsor is – Nasala Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Nasala is made in Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocer. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nasala Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find out more information at nasala.com. Programming note next week, do not miss the show. We're going to talk about what companion planting is, the benefits and the downsides, as well as – what happened to the Victory Garden, what it was, and where did it go, as well as founder of HaleyVThomas.com. She is a vegan teen chef. She is a 
public or a TEDx kid speaker. She spoke at the uh, White House during the Obama administration. She's been in Rachel. She's been on Rachel Ray, the Today Show, Doctor Oz, and she's only 16 years old. So she will be with us talking about healthy eating and living. For Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and until next week, we will see you in the garden. <laughs>